Why can a four-year-old not drive a car? Is it because they'd be a danger to the road and everyone around them? No, silly, it's because they can't reach the pedals, the pedals are so far away. Being the inclusive engineering student that I am, I'm gonna design a voice controlled system that can allow anybody to control a car. My car is gonna need a brain. Now I'm not gonna go and cut out someone's brain and chuck a hunk of meat in there. I'm gonna use this thing here. It's a controller and it was bought for me by a viewer. Thank you very much, by the way. It also has a pair of ears, effectively. It's a microphone. To get all of this working to how I want it, Future me here. Um, that mic is total shite. Later in the video, I utilize this one. It's much better. But for now, I can test the functionality of the code using the shite one. So the code's pretty riffraff. What you've got is this speech recognition model, which is actually trained by Google. It's an artificial intelligence model, and it's basically the thing that allows auto captions to work underneath this very video. <laughs> don't quote me on that. I don't actually know if that's true. The rest of it's just riffraff with recognizing my microphone as my source and all this sort of stuff. Let's go test that out. I want the car to be able to do five things. These five things are drive, turn left, turn right, go backwards, and attack. Doing AI things. As you can see, the speech script does a pretty good job of picking up those words. With the brain of the system working, now let's get some muscle involved. Motors. When you connect a battery to a motor, the motor spins, but this is only spinning in one direction, and if all the motors on the car spun in the same direction, it would just make the car go in one direction. But I want the car to go backwards as well, and be able to turn. To do that, instead of switching the terminals out every time, I'm gonna use this thing that I made. It utilizes a motor driver, which allows me to change not only the direction that the motor is spinning, but also the speed, which is really handy. Oh wow, look at this battle bot I made three months ago. I certainly wouldn't take it apart and use its carcass as my case because my 3D printer keeps on breaking when I try to print anything over an hour. Right? I'm sorry, little one. Drive. I've sped it up, but this clock is real time. Combo all those bits together and you get this. Let's be honest, it's pretty crap. It doesn't really drive that well. I'm not seeing enough movement! And it took quite a little time to actually listen for my voice. The second of those issues is caused by a computational issue. This board isn't powerful enough to process the complex code. And this design is pretty damn crap. In fact, the actual wheels are floating a little bit. So we've got to fix those two issues before this thing's actually ready to drive on the road. What the fuck are these motors doing? To reduce that computational power, the first thing I'm going to try is switch out the speech recognition software to a lighter model. So this here is Google, this is the one we've been using previously. Car, drive, forward. Success. So it works, it works pretty damn well. And this here is the lighter version. Car, drive, forward. What is that? Yeah. So uh, it's not great, it takes forever. It's pulling from an actual library on top of the Raspberry Pi as opposed to online, so I think that's the reason for the discrepancy. So uh, we're gonna stick to the Google one. Instead, I added a few delays and cleaned up the code, and we get some better performance. Drive. The car's now making decisions a lot quicker and can process multiple voice commands. Stop. However, the code crashes quite a lot. Drive. No. And when I drive this outside, I'm not going to have a way to know if the code has crashed. On top of that, I still want to give the car attacking functions, which needs additional computation. Drive. So I've got to transition the car over to a stronger, bulkier brain. Because of the changes I did make though, the code actually runs really well on the bulky boy. The other issue was the floating wheels, which meant there was no traction. With much tender love and care, I got my 3D printer working again, although it took 12 goddamn hours to print. Then I slapped the electronics from the crummy design into the modified one, which I can now test. Drive. Stop. Well, it's pretty consistently crap, but at least it's consistent. That's still pretty shite. The car is veering off to the right, and it, honestly, it's slow as hell. So to fix both those issues, I'm gonna try and switch out the motors to faster motors and just see what happens. Drive. <laughs> yeah. So this was something I was worried about when I was making my initial motor selection. Motors sacrifice speed for power. So essentially, if I take away opposing forces to those motors, 
they're going to be able to spin a little bit better. If I take this off the table, you can see that those motors the whole time were actually trying to spin but just couldn't overcome the forces that were opposing it, i.e. the weight of all the components. So I'm going to have to stick probably with the more powerful motors. I've got a random idea that I don't think is going to work that involves this stuff here, but we'll see what happens. Mm, yeah, it didn't really work. Absolutely useless. I began experimenting with some slower, more powerful motors, but I have come to a revelation. I am being an idiot. I've been trying to use four motors to drive my car on this tiny ass battery. But the thing is this battery can't supply enough current to my motors because there's so many of them. By reducing the number of motors to two, I'm starting to get a lot more of the performance I was hoping to get when I initially set out to do this project. Drive. Stop. So it's a little bit slow, but that is exactly what I want to see. I'm going to experiment with making it a little bit faster now. Drive. <laughs> Stop. Attack. Backwards. <laughs> Stop. No. Stop, you dumb piece of shit. Stop. <laughs> no, <fuck's sake. laughs> oh, shit. I noticed some words I say pick up worse than others, like stop kind of sus. Stop. But largely this robot car is working pretty damn well. Sayonara. Now I want to get an idea of just how strong it is. In the red corner, weighing in at approximately 600 grams and looking to make a name for himself, we have the voice controlled car. And in the blue corner, reigning microweight champion, who I'm sure needs no introduction. We have bread. Three, two, one, go! Forwards. And they are off! The young buck is straight into action, but good old bread is standing his ground. Come on, attack! The coach appears to be shouting encouragement, but the young buck just can't seem to do anything against the skillful mastery <laughs> of bread. Build them wheels. Oh, What's wow. this? The coach is blatantly helping the challenger. It literally cannot lift up the arm because this piece of shit's too heavy. I'll give it a little boost. No, it's just too heavy. Four wards. Will the young buck regain his honor? <laughs> oh my God, okay. Now I can finally drive this boy outside. While I waited for it to stop goddamn raining, I added some more key functionality. We've got turning right, left, and a slow function. Slow. Which was only possible because of the pulse whip modulation speed control. Outside time, let's go. Also, apologies for the background noise, I did this next to a motorway. Drive. Stop driving. <laughs> yeah. Right. Slow. <laughs> Go on. Stop, in the road. Stop driving. Well, there you go. <laughs> Dance. If you guys enjoyed, subscribe, and I will be seeing you guys next month. Goodbye.